The wait is finally over. Baseball season is here at last. And the excitement continues all season long at DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Daily sports means no season-long commitment, just instant cash and instant gratification. Why wait until the end of the season to claim your victory when you can win huge cash every single day? At DraftKings, it's like a brand new season every time you play. You just select two pictures, eight position players and stay under the salary cap and you could be on your way to a huge payday last year peter from colorado won over a million dollars at DraftKings in one day just playing fantasy baseball hundreds of thousands of fantasy sports fans have cashed in at DraftKings, and now it's your turn log on to DraftKings.com now and use the promo code rrn live to play for free you could be the next winner with over $300 million in cash and prizes to be awarded this season. Use the promo code RRN Live. That's RRN L I V E for free entry now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. All right, come on in, set on down, put those earbuds in. You're listening to In the Now podcast on the Radio Random Network. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. Thank you for joining us today. We got a great guest that's going to be joining us real soon. The one and only Bo Keister. We know him from Remember the Titans and got a brand new movie going to be coming out soon called Finding Waldo. He is also the host of the Hillbilly Horror Show. And he is the guy in the brand new Mountain Dew commercial, Blowing the Dale Call. He's going to be joining us real soon. But before we get to that, I just want to remind everybody, all the links that are talked about today on the show can be found at rrnonline.com or in the show notes and uh, if you would like to support or if you want to get in touch with us here or if you want to listen to old episodes from the past, all you have to do is go to rrnonline.com. And don't forget to visit the sponsors when you're there. Every time you visit our sponsors, they kick a little bit of money back to us at no extra cost to you. All right, speaking of sponsors, before we get to the interview, we're going to pay a bill. And when we come back, I'm going to be joined by the one and only... Bo Keister. So y'all stay right here. We'll be right back. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a 30-day free trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash radio random and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash radio random. That's audibletrial.com slash radio random to get started today. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audio book publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazines, and newspaper publishers, and also business information providers. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio. Radio Random. Go now. All right, before I'm joined by the one and only Bo Keister, I just want to remind everybody, this Friday I will be joined by a Reviver Records recording artist and the host of the nationally syndicated radio and video platform, Nash TV's Grits and Hits Cooking Show. I'm talking about none other than Laurel, Mississippi's own Samantha Lantrum. She's making waves up in Nashville, and we're going to talk to her Friday right here on the Radio Random Network, so be sure and tune in for that. All right, joining me today on In The Now on the Radio Random Network, I'm talking to veteran actor and producer, the one and only Bo Keister. How you doing, Bo? How's it going? It's going, man. I'm good, brother. How you doing? It's doing great. Bo, I got to tell you, you're, you and Marty Rayburn from Shenandoah are the only... Two returning guests I've ever had. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yes, indeed. Now, Marty had to come on twice because the first time we did a concert with him out here, and I was, uh, I've had, I'd had too many adult beverages, and the stuttering kicked in, and it, it was horrible, so I had to get him back. But that, that, can, that tends to happen with adult beverages. Yes, it does. 
Yes, it does. I, 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 I've been known to, to fade off into a slur once in a while. Well, speaking of the slurs, I don't know if uh, I encourage everybody to go look up the uh, the outtakes of uh, from the Hillbilly Horror Show from, uh, was it the last season? <laughs> Dude, that, that. Yeah, 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 from volume, uh, they're actually on uh, the DVD for volume two. Um, uh, we've got the outtakes, and then we've got uh, the the interviews uh, with the cast and crew, and uh, it's some pretty funny stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I think I've talked to everybody from the cast. I've talked to uh, Rachel Faulkner, who is uh, who plays yep. cousin Lulu. Which we want to we want to wish her a happy birthday today. Today's her birthday. All right. Well, happy birthday, Rachel. We can get her back on in the next couple of uh, weeks or so. And uh, I, I was supposed to talk to Scott, and for some reason it didn't. Uh, w- times didn't match up or something like that. But he has his own show as well, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, um, he does the uh, Gruesome Herzog uh, podcast, which is, I mean, pretty big within the horror world. Uh, I mean, they have him come out to do cons and. Uh, judge horror film festivals and all kinds of stuff that's pretty cool that and then and then yeah. on the flip side he, he he's on the hillbilly horror show where he lord knows what he's doing yeah <laughs> well i mean yeah <laughs> yeah that, that's that's the thing i mean scott's known as the voice of four so we're kind of playing against the opposite <laughs> there yeah. you know turning him into a mumbling idiot <laughs> yes. um but he he does he does both well. I will say that for him. And and the other real place where Scott's an asset to the show is he has forgotten about more horror films and horror short films than most people will ever know uh, in their lifetime. I mean he he watches them and gets submissions sent to him for reviews all the time. So uh, yeah, he's he's seen them all. That that's pretty cool. And, you know, I, I've talked to him. I've actually talked to him on social media and, and different things. He, he He's real knowledgeable with the, the horror stuff, but uh, he, he told me he's known to take a few uh, take a few drinks as well. Yeah, well, every now and again, uh, you can catch us drinking some beers, <laughs> uh, usually, uh, usually after we get off set. Uh, that's, uh, that's definitely Miller time at that point. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So you got a lot of stuff happening in 2015. First and foremost, we'll talk a little bit about the Hillbilly Horror Show and, and what you guys got coming up. But uh, you also have Finding Waldo. Yeah, and that's going to be a biggie right there. That's uh, mine and Blue's. Uh, well, Blue created this, um, I mean, just amazing feature film script uh, and has uh, – asked me to play the lead character, which I'm extremely flattered. Uh, it's going to be just an amazing film. But basically, I play uh, Chance Reed, who is a ex-pro football quarterback, uh, whose career kind of went to hell in a handbasket due to his battles with alcoholism <laughs> that culminate into a, a really uh, a not-so-good situation with a drunken driving accident. Um, uh, one night that lands him in prison and we pick up his story. Uh, he's out of prison and he's working in a mail room of a Lloyd's of London esque insurance firm, uh, that's run by Richard Reilly's character, Cyrus Motley. And they insure, uh, this eccentric novelist. Waldo Green, who is now claiming he is insane and has checked himself into a mental institution. He's dispatched with three people from the insurance company already. And so they send me in under the ruse that I am a uh, a journalist with uh, a magazine that, you know, writes about writers. Right. And uh, they they send me in to see if I can determine whether or not he's really crazy or if he's just faking it for to get the the insurance payoff well when i go to interview him everything goes wrong he kidnaps me and we end all end up heading out on the uh, road trip from hell and uh, through the arizona desert but as it kind of spins as the as the yarn spins you come to realize waldo's not exactly what he seems 
In fact, nothing is exactly what it seems. And there is just a twist ending at this thing that is going to leave people in awe. And uh, it's going to make for just one hell of a film. And so right now we're getting that off the ground. Uh, we uh, Planet Capricorn uh, came on as production partners uh, for part of the budget, and we're uh, in the process of raising the rest of the budget. Uh, we're talking to other invest, investment groups, and uh, we also started an Indiegogo campaign. So people can go to Indiegogo and just search for Finding Waldo and pull us up, check it out, um, you know, all the information about the film is there, and, you know, we'd love it if people would, you know, throw a little coin our way yes, uh, and support the film. And, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully this fall we're rolling in Arizona. That 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 is awesome. And, and it seems Indiegogo is actually you know, the way to go, talking to different people and everything. That's a great cause. I mean, and... and, and it gets it gets the uh, I guess uh, the the audience or or or, or the uh, the fans of the film involved. I mean, you, you guys also have uh, perks you're giving away. Yeah, uh, we've got all kinds of uh, cool perks set up for this thing. Where you know, I mean, you get all kinds of memorabilia from the film. Um, I mean, the poster uh, we're hoping to release uh, for public view uh, here in the next day or two and i mean it's just going to be iconic uh but i mean you know you're you, you know you can sign up for perks you can even you can even sign up for a perk that you know gets you access to the premiere uh when we do it and walk the red carpet with the cast and crew just like you're part of the film um you know come hang out on you know there's perks where you can come hang out on set there's perks where you can actually play a character on set uh, and actually have a line in the film. Um, and then, you know, as far as memorabilia, uh, you know, depending on, you know, the level of donation that somebody wants to do, I mean, uh, they can get all kinds of autograph merchandise, you know, T-shirts and sweatshirts that would normally be only reserved for cast and crew. So uh, there's, there's just tons of stuff. And, uh, you know, the one thing about Indiegogo that I really like is that you have the option to do the flexible funding so that even if you don't meet your goal, you still, you, you know, it wasn't just all for naught. Because right, uh, right. running those campaigns is a bear. I mean, you've got to constantly keep people updated and you've got to constantly be, you know, piping it out there through social media. And it's a lot of work. It is, an, it is a ton of work. But, you know, it's well worth the effort at the end of the day and – you know, it gets the fans involved. It raises awareness about the film and, you know, kind of puts it on everybody's radar, I think. Yes, indeed. Yep. You're right about that. And I see a lot of different people using it. And it is a lot of work. I mean, being social media in itself is a lot of work when you're trying to promote anything these days, man. It's crazy. You take. The... Yes, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. You know, I mean, I, I pretty much. Um, handle most uh blue handles most of twitter um and uh you know but we're constantly on our social media you know we're constantly interacting with our fans of hillbilly horror show and you know i mean and then i have my own personal um you know facebook fan page and uh then we've got the finding waldo page uh, you know and you know i mean granted you know We've got a publicity firm that handles a lot of things for us, but we're the ones that are out there engaging directly with our fans. Definitely. Uh, which we love to do. I mean, it was certainly no burden by any means, but it's a lot to keep up with when you're juggling three, four of these pages and, you know, <laughs> got people interacting with you. It's, you know, <laughs> like juggling girlfriend definitely and, and what i like about it is you know people see and, and you start having a little success right and people see it and then all of a sudden they want to help do y'all get that yeah um usually they want to help of, until they see of, what they got uh you know what they get themselves into then they you don't hear from them anymore yeah i mean you do you get some you get a few crazy uh, every <laughs> yes, now and again indeed. but um now, you know, the thing is, is so far, for the most part, um, 
you know, everything that we have gotten has been supportive. Um, you know, people telling us how much they love the show or wishing us luck with the film or, you know, uh, making donations. I mean, we just, uh, we just had one benefactor that, uh, a couple weeks back offered to, uh, do a $500 match contest. Wow. And we completed our 500 through multiple $10 donations from people. Um, and then, you know, the benefactor chipped in their 500 this morning. So, you know, it, it's cool things like that, you know, that you're sitting there going, hey, you know, we're going to make this work one way or the other. And then, you know, also, you know, reaching out to different investment groups and things like that that are considering, you know, uh, coming on board for the rest of the budget, you know, that helps as well. And I, I really think we're going to get what we need and get this thing shot this fall. I really believe we'll we'll get it done. Yes, indeed. What uh, Mox the Hillbilly Horror Show and, and everything else that you've been doing, you, you just just ran on TV, uh, or I seen it a couple of days ago, rather, uh, the the famous Dale Call from uh, Mountain Dew. <laughs> man, that is freaking cool. That, oh, man, I am so stoked about that commercial being out there. Uh, you know, I mean, the Dale Call just became Huge. Yeah, you used to be able to forget uh, you know, it. Go ahead. Yeah, I, well, I mean, apparently, you know, they're just they're selling out of them at every race. Um, but yeah, uh, the I shot that uh, back in January, and um, you know, I mean, I was hoping it would come on even sooner than it did, but it finally came out May first uh, and aired during the Talladega race. So. Uh, it was just really exciting. I mean, it's a funny commercial, um, and, you know, just had so much fun shooting it, uh, you know, because we shot it there, uh, you know, got to shoot with Dale Jr. and got to shoot with him there uh, on his property in Mooresville, which was just amazing. And, um, you know, I mean, the spot turned out great. I hope it runs till people are sick of seeing me. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, how was it hanging with Dale? Unfortunately, I didn't really get to do anything more than say hi to him because when we shot that, uh, he was on such a tight schedule. Um, I mean, they literally had a window of time to get him in there, get all his stuff shot, and then he had to get on the road because they were prepping for the Daytona 500. So, um, you know, didn't get to really hang out with him much, but, you know, seemed like a really cool guy, and, you know, the, the spot turned out great, so I can't complain. But, you know, anytime he wants me to come back down and hang out with yeah. him, I'll be more, yes. more than glad to do, do it. A little hunting, maybe? Yeah, do a little hunting, a little fishing, play some paintball. Eat some groceries. Uh, yeah, I, could, I could do that. I, I, I want to get out there and, and, and race some go-karts against him. I want to see, see if I can take I him. think you could. I might. I'm pretty good in the go-karts. I, I think you could. I, I'm. Of course. Do you watch the uh, NASCAR? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I grew up. My dad and I were both huge race fans. My dad was actually a NASCAR official here at a regional track. Really? Uh, for years. Yeah, and uh, that's what he used to do. That was his Saturday hobby, was standing out in the sun on a flag stand, flagging the races. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I grew up around it, so I love the sport. I really do. And, of course, and, and funny enough, I'm a huge Dale Jr. fan. I was a diehard senior fan and then uh, shifted over to Dale Jr. Did you get to keep the Dale call that you used? I did not, and I wanted to so bad, and they wouldn't let me tag on it. I know. I got on uh, Amazon the other night just for shits and giggles, and those things, they went from, like, being $10 to, like, 75 bucks. And from what I understand, because I really – you get away from professional wrestling, and I'm I'm lost. Uh, you know, I I know of Dale Junior. I know you know Dale Senior. I know the story, but I don't really follow the NASCAR thing. But uh, according to my fiance, that if he does good in the season, it's probably going to become like a collector's item. Oh yeah, it. I mean, it's a big deal. Um, a friend of mine just went to the Talladega race and told me that uh, 
they went over to the hauler about two hours after it opened, you know, not thinking anything about it, and they were going to get a, a Dale call, and sure enough, they were already sold out in two hours. Wow. So, it, it, I mean, you know, you just never can tell with these things. I mean, <laughs> it is something crazy. so simple just blows up, but, uh, you know, hey, if uh, – you know, if it if it helps me book more commercials or book more work or you know, yes, whatever, indeed, you'll be the damn call I'll guy. Take it. I hope I hope it runs forever. Certainly, certainly. Now, hillbilly, back to the hillbilly horror show. Y'all have uh, what is it? Season four is going to be coming up here shortly, correct? Yeah, uh, volume four. Uh, we're hoping uh, is going to uh, be launching on iTunes to start uh we're working on that right now um and uh then it'll start to filter out into other places but volume four is hands down the best we've done yet it uh it, it's absolutely hysterical i mean i don't even know how we got through filming it wow. uh because it was just one laugh at, at, after another if it wasn't one of us cracking up it was one of the crew members cracking up you know, because uh, Volume 4 sets up for Volume 5, where Cephas takes off on a cultural exchange program with North Korea. And Kim Jong... And, yeah, we get Kim Jong-un <laughs> in return sporting a mullet. Lord have mercy. And you have, not, you have not seen anything so funny as Kim Jong-un rocking a mullet, let me tell you right now. Uh, the mullet alone is worth the price of admission i mean it is one fine mullet <laughs> well you know they, they shut down the uh the the theaters with all the uh the threats and everything from the movie the interview i'm just thinking where did they get a load of this man <laughs> well exactly and the funny thing is is we actually did this and shot this before all of that happened um you know i, I would have loved to have gotten a hold of uh you know sony pictures and said hey run out of stuff with your stuff you know yes, i mean definitely. i don't care to ruffle ruffle feathers over there no. um doesn't bother me any but yeah the the funniest thing is is i had just happened to see an article you know uh god i guess it was in like september or something and you know kim jong-un had apparently just kind of disappeared for like a week or something and nobody seemed to know where he was and they you know they're running these articles about him and i said something to blue and then you know that just sparked the idea He's like, <laughs> okay let's do this and i'm like oh are you serious dude i was like we're gonna have you know we're gonna have to like have bodyguards <laughs> everything else but we went ahead and went with it and uh got it in the can and then all of a sudden you know this stuff went crazy over the interview and um uh, you know we we reached out to a few people but i don't you know i guess i guess i guess uh james franco and seth rogan ruffle more feathers than we do yes indeed or perhaps perhaps kim jong-un liked the picture of him with a mullet i don't know possibly you know i think he's watching he, you know i mean he's He's got to do something because I mean that hairstyle he's rocking right now is just that thing. That's <laughs> yes, shit, man. That, You're right about God, that. God help me. I mean, you know, I mean he always over killing people. He ought to kill his hairstyle. De definitely. Yes, indeed. I'm sitting here talking to the one and only Bo Keister. Bo, any any goals for 2015? Any other stuff we're working on? You mean besides conquering the world? Besides conquering uh, the world. Yeah. Uh, well. We, I mean, you know, our big focus right now is finding Waldo. That's uh, that's definitely, you know, that and Hillbilly Horror Show are, at least from a producing standpoint, my two major focuses. Um, but you know, for me personally, um, you know, I'm just I'm out there just aiming to book more work. Uh, matter of fact, I'm up for a couple. I'm up for roles in a couple of different films down there in Louisiana. Come on. So, uh, hey. Uh, brother, when I get there, man, have the beer cold and the red beans and rice ready. Yes, well, it's crawfish uh, season, so certainly. Oh, man, I'm ready to go. Good Lord. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, that's kind of my major thing is I want to get down into the Louisiana market, uh, you know, a little bit stronger and just uh, 
you know, just keep booking work, man. I mean, I, you know, I, I welcome every opportunity I get, you know, I mean, I don't care if it's SAG, you know, low budget indie film or, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, if it's a good role and, you know, a, a cool story or, or going to be a fun film, I mean, so, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to get out there and, and just uh, keep racking up work, man. Well, who, are, who are you working with down here in Louisiana? Anybody uh, you can talk about just yet? Well, uh, I mean, my, I've got an agent down there. Uh, you know, uh, Fruition Talent's my agency down there, and uh, my agent, Valerie Hanna, she's awesome. She just, I mean, uh, she's come in, taken over, and just, uh, man, I mean, every time I turn around, I'm getting a phone call or an email from her saying, you got to audition for this and audition for this. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, awesome. I'm, man, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> so, you know right, right down the road from us here, from me here at uh, Studios is uh, Bo Duke, uh, John Snyder. Yeah, I'm actually Facebook friends with John. I think John's never gotten to meet him in person, but uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, we're Facebook friends. We got you know a lot of mutual friends. I'm, I definitely would love to work with him one day. Well, I mean, you know, he, I mean he, yeah. he's got. I grew up. I grew up. You know, when I was a kid, I used to pretend to be him. Right. You know, right. <laughs> you know, especially with my name being Bo. Right. So, you know, it's just. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I'd love the opportunity to work with John one day. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm not sure if he listens, but we do have we have mutual friends. I've yet to meet the guy, actually. I, I actually had a uh, meeting set up with him one time. He was going to come to the studio, but uh, uh, I forget. I, I think he was. Uh, I think he was in Georgia filming with uh, uh, Tyler Perry for the Oprah Network or something. Oh I, yeah. It, well, usually if you're filming in Georgia, Tyler Perry is attached to it somehow. Man, that guy. Is, he is. He owns Atlanta. It's crazy. Yes, indeed. And now, is that? Have you have you had a chance to talk with him or meet with him yet, old Tyler Perry? No, I read. Uh, I think I read for a couple of roles uh, on one of his shows or a couple of his shows, but uh, hadn't had any luck there just yet. I think you should pitch White Medea to him, man. You'd make a, a great White Medea. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know what? I'm, I may just do you that. need to write I may that just, down. I may just shoot him an email. I'm serious. You need to write that <laughs> down. And and if anybody steals it, I'm gonna whip their ass because me and me and Bo talked about it here first, and I got it on recording. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> But yes, indeed, it, Bo. It's great, always great, to catch up with you and talk to you, man. I follow you on Facebook. I see I, one thing. I'm going to tell you, man. Off, uh, I guess not trying to get deep or anything, but off the subject of movies and everything. I have a ton of respect for you because you're a very busy man. Number one, and, and number two, you must be like the greatest daddy in the world because not only are you out there promoting your films and everything, you're constantly involved in everything that your your, your boys are doing. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, my boys, my boys are, uh, I mean, they're my heart and soul. I mean, they, you know, they're kind of what drives me because, you know, I want them to, I want to always be a dad that they can be proud of, um, you know, and I always want to, you know, make sure that they have, you know, whatever it is they need. And, and also, you know, a, a big thing for me is, you know, them seeing me succeed and, you know, you know, following my dreams and, and, you know, going after, uh, you know, my goals, I think sets a precedence for them, Right. you know, that, uh, you know, I, I tell them all the time, you know, always believe in yourself, follow your heart, chase your dreams and never, ever give up because you can make anything happen if you put your mind to it. Yes, indeed. And I try to instill that in them all the time. As a matter of fact, I've got a space in my kitchen. I'm going to get an artist friend of mine to do a big tin sign with that on it uh, so that it's there and they see it every time that they're here with me. And, you know, I mean, they're here with me every day, uh, you know, in, in one way or another. And, uh, you know, they, for them to, you know, kind of burn that into their brain so that they always know, you know, you can dream big and you can shoot for the stars because, you know, I'm living proof that it can happen. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a kid from 
small town Virginia. I mean, I grew up in a little town in uh, Dublin, Virginia. Population, I think, when I was growing up was around 2,300 people. And, you know, Hollywood seemed like a million miles away. Hell, it might as well have been on the moon. But I'm here, and I'm doing it. And, you know, I'm, nothing's going to stop me. <laughs> so, you know, I want them to, I want them to dream big in the same way. And I, I you know, I, I, but I try to make sure, you know, I'm on the road a lot. I'm gone a lot and they're used to it because it's been that way since they were babies. Right, right. But, um, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm really fortunate. I mean, I mean, their mom, Cindy, she, you know, she's always, you know, willing to help out and, you know, work around my schedule and my, my mom and dad, you know, and my aunt and my uncle, they all jump in and pitch in to help whenever I've got, you know, a shoot somewhere. And uh, I'm really blessed to have such a support system around me. Um, but when I'm in town, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I do the work I got to do. I mean, cause you know, producing and everything else is, is a juggling act, uh, but you know, at least where time is concerned, but you know, anything and everything that I can be there for, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a fishing field trip or, you know, uh, a baseball game or what have you, uh, you know, that's where my focus is, you know, go with where your heart is. Definitely. Before we let you go today and you can get back to, uh, your busy day. And, uh, is there anything you'd like to say to any of your fans or anybody out there listening? Man, just, I, you know, I can't, I can't even put into words how much it means, uh, the support from the fans, you know, the, the little messages on Facebook or, you know, little shout outs on Twitter and everything else. I mean, just, it means the world to me personally. It means the world to us as a team, you know, behind the show and behind these films. Um, just knowing that our fans are enjoying what we're doing, uh, you know, are liking my work. Uh, as an actor, you know, it just, uh, you, you can't get any better than that. And, you know, I just want to thank everybody for all the support and, you know, keep it coming. Uh, we love hearing from you. I love hearing from, from fans and, uh, you know, get out there and share, uh, you know, share what we're doing, spread the word. And, uh, you know, also, you know, get out there and support finding Waldo on Indiegogo and let's, uh, let's make a, a kick-ass movie yes indeed it is finding waldo you can find all the links to everything that we talked about here on the show today at rrnonline.com you can connect with bo on twitter at bo keister that's right and you can find out more about the hillbilly horror show at hillbillyhorrorshow.com all that good stuff go go check out uh see is season four is it out now uh, no, Volume 4 is not out yet, uh, but we may, uh, you know, keep an eye on hillbillyhorrorshow.com and keep uh, track of us on Facebook and Twitter um, at Hillbill Horror. Uh, and then, of course, you can just look up Hillbilly Horror Show on Facebook and uh, keep an eye out because we may do a sneak peek for our fans. Awesome. So that's, that's something that might be cooking up. Uh, real soon. So be keeping an eye out over the next uh, next week or so. Yes, indeed. Bo, it was great talking with you today, my friend. And uh, you know you're welcome. Thank you, Russ. I appreciate it, brother. You know you're welcome back anytime. And uh, y'all check him out and uh, check out those great movies he's putting out. Be sure and support. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, Bo. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. All right, it. man. We'll catch you later.